If I'd known this earlier, I could have saved myself a lot of sadness and hardship. If you hold the control key, the shift key, and the T when you accidentally close a web page or document, it'll reload. Oh, right. <laughs> but we're here about the coffee and the tea. Uh, here's the thing. A lot of people enjoy their coffee and tea, and who am I to tell you to stop? Not like most people would care anyway, as we've been sucked into the sweet embrace of caffeine addiction. But there is a wrong way to consume both that actually eliminates the positive impacts of both on your health, if you care about that kind of thing. You see, coffee and tea are filled with polyphenols, molecules that have multiple positive effects in our body. For example, polyphenols will act as antioxidants, meaning that they eliminate damaging molecules called reactive oxygen species, which otherwise interact with components of the cell and damage them. Not only that, polyphenols reduce the activity of a major producer of these reactive oxygen species called NADPH oxidase. This is all going to matter in a minute, because these polyphenols improve something called flow-mediated dilation, as in, your blood vessels will open, allowing more blood flow and, by extension, more nutrients to the cells of the body. It also reduces blood pressure, thereby protecting you from cardiovascular disease. The blood vessel is able to do that through the activity of an enzyme that can be turned off by excess reactive oxygen species. It's called ENOS. If ENOS is active, like when free polyphenols are around, it produces more nitric oxide, a potent molecule that widens the blood vessel and more flow-mediated dilation. However, if nitric oxide interacts with reactive oxygen species, it turns into a harmful peroxynitrite that also damages the structures around it, reducing flow-mediated dilation. The short of it is that uh, the ability for your body to be more responsive, so have greater adaptability and flow-mediated dilation, that's linked to better health. So researchers fed participants either water or tea to measure changes in flow-mediated dilation. And as we can see here, there's the water condition, the tea condition, and the mysterious third condition that I will reveal shortly. If the bars go up, that's an increase in uh, flow-mediated dilation. Clearly, the T increased flow media dilation multiple fold, but this blue bar knocks down the effect to nothing again. Turns out that condition is the exact same T, but mixed with milk. So why is milk causing tea to lose its effectiveness? And is this also the case with coffee? Well, here's the thing. It's believed that polyphenols can bind proteins like those in milk that ultimately makes them inert. So, does this affect coffee too? Well, there's certainly similar polyphenols in coffee, but there's a unique effect in coffee when mixed with milk. Before we get to that, there's additional data on how different proteins affect this process as well as more data coming from these studies. If you're interested, check out the full analysis in the Physionic Insiders. Or if you might be uh, more interested, I have hundreds more of these analyses, including quick 30 second summaries that could be delivered to your inbox on a weekly basis. That includes uh, some work on the optimal amounts of coffee and tea for health benefits and more specifics on the mechanisms of coffee's health promoting effects and so much more. Come on, feed your addiction and strengthen your bias. I can help you there. Okay, what about coffee and the nasty, nasty milks this is? In this second study, researchers measured the bioavailability of the most potent polyphenols in coffee, chlorogenic acid, by measuring the urinary excretion over 24 hours after consuming a standard cup of coffee. So the greater the excretion, the more was absorbed. If we look at that data, we can see the 24 hours broken up by time blocks, and we can see that the amount of excretion of CGA, that's chlorogenic acid, on the vertical axis, the higher the bar, the better. Then we have our trusty water condition and the coffee alone and the coffee with milk. If we look at the excretion, it's elevated in both coffee conditions for the first four hours, but then the milk condition, while still experiencing an increase in these polyphenols, lags behind the coffee only condition. That implies that milk is reducing the bioavailability of chlorogenic acid, so it's likely not being absorbed. These data, along with the T data, indicates that milk seems to reduce the levels of beneficial molecules found in coffee and tea. But there's more to this story. Here's the thing. 
In either of these studies, the researchers are looking at short-term measures. We're talking 24 hours. They're also using acute measures like flow mediated dilation, which can change in the short term, but then not reflect long-term effects. A great example is exercise, which can reduce flow mediated dilation temporarily, but then increase it later, as well as it is known to be robustly related to positive health outcomes. The unfortunate aspect here, although I looked, I couldn't find any long-term studies over decades looking at these drinks with and without milk and actual outcomes like cancer rates or cardiovascular disease events and so on. I found one that separated black coffee from coffee with uh, additives, but the additives included sugar, so not a fair or clean comparison. That leaves us with some mechanistic data, which is, as I've shouted from the rooftops, a weak foundation for lasting arguments without clinical outcome-driven data. That isn't even to mention the minuscule sample size for one of these studies. Still, there is some evidence across multiple polyphenols that there's reduced uptake of these polyphenols. So that isn't anything to ignore, especially when other studies referenced by the researchers indicate similar results. If you're watching the insider version of this analysis, I'll have more to say on that front. So where does that leave us? Well, listen, if you really enjoy milk in your coffee or tea, go. Be free. Do not let some know-it-all PhD keep you from your dreams. We accept milk drinkers and pure drinkers alike here at Physionic. But if you're especially worried about getting the best bang for your buck, this weak evidence indicates consuming coffee and tea plain, pure, and unmuddied is superior to the lowly milk drinkers. <laughs> you fell for my non-judgment, you fool! Then fall into this next video. We're non-judgmental there too. Pinky promise.